Today, we'll be looking at the new split turning effect that was introduced in DaVinci Resolve 20.1. We're going to be looking at five different clips and see whether we can color grade these clips for using split toning alone. Split toning is a photo and editing technique that applies different color tints to the shadows and highlighted areas of an image, creating a stylized look and enhancing the mood. Split toning was first introduced in traditional dark rooms where photographers would use different chemical processes to color prints. Now we have Photoshop and Lightroom and now even DaVinci Resolve where we can add color in post into the shadows, into the midtones and into the highlights to create a stylized look. If you're very new to color grading, this is a very beginner friendly tutorial where we'll only be using a few nodes and most color grading just on that one particular split tone effect. So let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and start color grading. We well, are in DaVinci Resolve now and we have this clip here and this is one of a few clips that we'll go through today and in this beginning clip we're going to just do a very basic color correction and then we're going to throw on split toning and then go from there and see if we can actually create a decent grade from split toning alone. Now color correction and color grading are two very very different things so I'm just going to color correct we're just going to color grade solely with split toning. So we have this clip here and simply what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to create two notes and I'm going to add a CST. So we're going to go over to color space transform. I'm just going to drag these over to these two clips right here. Well, these two nodes. And initially what I'm going to put, I'm going to put S log free into, well, S gamma free dot cine into the color space and S log free for the input gamma. Then for the output color space, I'm going to put DaVinci wide gamma and DaVinci intermediate because we want to be working in a DaVinci wide gamut color space. So then what I'm going to do is in the secondary output node here, I'm going to put input color space as as we are now basically working in DaVinci wide gamut. We want to go from DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate to Rec 709 and my output gamut I'm going to put as Rec 709A as I'm working on a Mac. So I'm, I'm using Rec 709A. So we've done this and basically this has converted our image into Rec from S-Log from Sony A7 III to Rec 709. So then we can start doing some basic color corrections. So I'm going to be a bit cheeky and I'm just going to do everything on one node to correct my contrast, my bounds, etc, etc. Um, so within this node, I'm not going to pay too much attention um, on everything. We're just going to do just general adjustments. So I'm just going to come over to my left. We know the shadows are a little bit too strong here, so I'm just going to bring the shadows up. Maybe I'll bring the gain down. I'd usually use HDR wheels, but for now I'm just going to use primary wheels. Maybe lift the gamma a bit this way, bring the gain down. Uh, bring the shadows down this way and this is a kind of a nice starting point already we've gone from before and then after and I'm kind of happy with kind of how the image is sitting as a neutral base to begin from so I'm going to make one more note here and I'll call this my split toning and in this note here to apply the split toning I'm going to come over to split and we're going to see split tone which is new for DaVinci 20.1 drag this over to this particular node right here and you can see already from the before and after, it's added some specific split toning. It looks like some kind of a teal and orange type of split tone onto this particular clip. Now with split toning in itself, we have a split tone mode and we have a natural, strong or custom and you can then adjust it to kind of how you want to adjust it. We're really going to be looking at the natural one and you're going to see if we can actually create something cool just with this look alone. So again, we have a very wreck look here and it does look pretty decent to be honest, um, but you still do have like the Sony magentas, etc, etc. I mean, I can adjust this in the balancing node, but maybe we can kind of adjust the clip using just a split tone node. So here I can adjust the strength of this particular color split that we have here. And you can see it's added some color. Um, it's a little too strong for me, so I'm going to bring it down. But you have your strength here, then you have your hue angle. So what type of colors are actually going to be working together to create a look. So what I do recommend you do first is leave your strength as it is, go over to your hue angle and simply start shifting this to find colors that you prefer for this specific, for your look. And I kind of prefer this look where we have a little bit of greens in the shadows and still some oranges in the midtones and it looks pretty nice. Then I can come over to my strength and then you can come in and adjust this like this and come over to your pivot and shift this more towards, I guess, the magenta side or more towards the green tint side, I guess. So I'm just gonna find a nice point, maybe about here, and I'm pretty happy with that. So already we have a before and an after, and this has done a pretty decent job in adding a simple split toning. Now we can further go on and actually adjusting the image, darkening this top area, adding some more maybe green tints to the sky, etc., etc., and go from there. But for now we have a before and an after, and hopefully that kind of as simple as that showcase to you 
you can create it, but of course it probably does need some adjustment. Maybe I just want to make it very, very subtle so you have it before and then after. And you can see it does a pretty decent job. So we can move on to our next clip here and do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to come over to my clips here. I'm just going to right click on the color grade that we did on the previous clip and press apply grade. And that will apply the grade from the previous clip onto this. I'm going to turn the split toning off and I'm just simply going to come over to our balancing node here that we basically did, our just color correcting node. I'm just going to add a bit more saturation to this particular node and I think that's a decent starting point to continue from. So I have my split toning node and I'll turn this on and I'll reset this completely. So here what I'll do is come over to my hue angle, choose a point that I kind of like, so I kind of like this look right here, come over to my strength, maybe I want it to be quite strong, so it's quite strong here, it's looking quite filmic I guess, and then I can shift the pivot more towards the greens or more towards the magentas I guess, um, depending on where you kind of want to take your image. So maybe I just want to leave it about here, and already we have, I would say quite a nice grade, we have a before and an after, and I think that looks pretty good. Then after this, you can say, you can then start doing some more adjustments to your clip, so I can actually start using curves to really fine tune the image, bring the image down, like so, I can come over to my HDR wheels, bring the highlights of the sky down, I can actually then maybe bring the colors down overall, and we have this really nice before and an after with this look, and it, from the split toning by itself, we have a before and an after, and in my opinion, for someone who's very new to color grading, this is a great way to start. Basically, you're just adjusting sliders and you can go from there. Once you get familiar and you get comfortable with what colors you kind of prefer or what colors look good, then you can start moving on to actually learning to color grade a little bit more properly. And you can follow maybe even our two hour masterclass that we've done on starting from scratch in terms of your color grading and creating a really, really cool look and understanding color grading and the concepts just a little bit better. But I'm really happy with this look. The one thing that you might find makes your footage look a little bit amateurish is if you have your strength super high. Now this might be a stylistic look, however what I recommend is maybe just make the strength a lot less than a lot more if that makes some sense whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with this look and we'll move on to the next clip. This clip is a much more of a low light situation. So again, I'm just gonna apply the same grade from the previous clip. I'm gonna get rid of this node right here and I'm gonna get rid of the split toning for now and we'll just do some quick balancing. We'll reset this and I'm just gonna bring my lift up like this and I'll bring my highlights up as well and some mid-tones here is fine and I'll add some saturation, add some contrast and drop the pivot there. So already we have a before and an after, decent rec kind of look. Um, for then we can come over to our split toning bring the split toning over on top of this node, and here we can probably actually go a lot stronger. It's a bit of a quirky shot, so probably you can go a lot more hard on the strength. So I can bring this strength way up, and actually, before and then after, this looks really, really cool. I don't mind the vibrancy as much as we did before. But I can come over to my hue angle, and I can shift this, and I can find a point to where I kind of prefer. I'm a guy who loves greens. Um, I love greens and mid-tones. I love greens and shadows. Um, so I do kind of like this, but maybe we'll try and go with a point that we don't normally go with. So often you'll find in old film or damaged film, like the shadows are often quite pinky and ready. Um, so this kind of looks like that, and I kind of like it. And then you can come over to your pivot if you so wish, and you can shift this more towards the greens, like this, and this actually looks pretty cool, uh, or more towards the magenta. So maybe I just want to shift it more towards greens, and it'll just make those blues a bit nicer as well. So we have a before and an after, and what I do recommend is when you're using split toning and you have people within the frame, concentrate on the skin tones, making sure that the skin tones look somewhat nice. Like I could have, um, where we started before, the skin tones was very hot, um, the reds was like very, very hot. So you just gotta adjust the hue, uh, so the hue angle, but also just the strength, and just be mindful of that. But again, in terms of grade, we have a before, and an after, and I'm really, really happy with it. And then you can go on to do whatever you wish to do. You can then maybe, if you so wished, I'll bring this uh, output node down here. Maybe here we want to add some softening. So if say if you want to create a um, filmic, I can come over to a Gaussian blur, and maybe I'll put this at 1.0.15ish, maybe even 0.16. And that'll soften up the image, and then we can add some grain. So I can add some grain here, 
like this. And maybe I just want to do some 35 mil 400T, which is one of my favorites. And then I can just really crank that grain strength up. Then you have a, with these two nodes, we have a before and an after. And you do get much more of that kind of vintage filmic look. And I kind of really like it. Uh, and then all three of these color grading nodes that we've done, we've gone from a before to an after. And it does look pretty cool. Then, you know, in you can make even another node as we did before. And again, this is very, very messy of me, but then you can start adding, okay, I actually wanted some more of that green within the clip here or some yellows into those shadows and use my left to shift some color into those shadows like this. And then maybe in the game, you wanted to add some more of that magenta or even some more of that blue like this. And you can kind of go from that and you can really start split toning even more, I guess, from the primaries. And this is kind of how you'd originally do it without the split toning node. And you can still do it this way. And it's, it is a way that I still probably do recommend. But you have a very, very stylistic look that we've created, gone from a before and an after, only in a few nodes. You're not having to do any like craziness or nothing too complicated. It's just a simple basis of what you think looks good. And a really good way of understanding what looks good and what does not look good, if you don't know, is looking at loads of inspirational images, going on stuff like Shot Deck, going on stuff like Pinterest, going on stuff like Google, um, and looking at images, studying images, and just being like, just really critically looking at them and thinking, what colors are in the shadows? What colors are in the highlights? Okay. Maybe you see a pattern of images that you prefer, and then you can kind of then in your own clips, okay, I really liked blues in a lot of these, you know, Christopher Nolan films or whatever it is. So I'm just gonna try and add some blues into my shadows. And then you, you go from there. And that's how you learn what kind of looks good, what doesn't look good for you personally. So this looks good. And then we have this one more uh, clip that we have here. Again, this time what I'll do is I'm gonna use one of the vault power grades. So I'm gonna press right click and apply grade on cinema TNO. And this will give us a really nice shot. I'm just gonna come over to the contrast node. I'm just gonna add the contrast. It's a little higher already. We have a before and an after. And we have this nice, very subtle teal and orange kind of look to this image. Um, but yeah, I'm a fan. But what I can do is maybe bring these nodes down. We make one node, we call this uh, our split. So even if you have a node tree structure that you already work with already, whatever it may be, you can then come over and use split toning in terms of this new split toning effect within your node tree structure. Now, I recommend doing it maybe after your global or just before just before you go, but it depends where you kind of want to take it. Um, but then you can go from there. So already we have a before and an after, and you can see the colors look quite rich and it looks pretty nice. Maybe I want to shift the pivot more towards the greens. Maybe I want to bring the strength a bit lower, and then I can just kind of mess with my hue angle and see where I kind of want to take it. Do I want it to be warmer? Do I want it to be cooler? Maybe I just want to bring this down actually. Find this here and then bring the strength of this like this and i'm really happy with this kind of look it's gone a bit more of that filmic look you know that split tone type of look so we've gone from a before and an after our full screen before and an after and you can see how easily we've added color to this particular clip that we have here and it looks really really good i'm pretty happy with it so that is a new split toning effect in a nutshell i hope you do have a go and especially if you're a beginner um, i hope this is a good and easy way for you to get into actually messing around with colors because often when you're beginning playing around with colors is quite daunting actually um but using the sliders using the strength slider using the hue slider just mess around feel free to push it as hard as you want feel free to bring it down as well and see what kind of looks good to you and then the more you practice the more you get your eyes familiar to what a good image looks like through your study which i suggested then you're going to understand and you're going to be able to create better images but having the tools and understanding the tools that's available to you also uh, will also then compound on top of that to help you create a better image as well so yes i hope you enjoyed this video please do like and subscribe if you found this helpful thank you